A Black Lives Matter activist has come up with a solution to racial inequality in the U.S. Now, this follows a surge in anti-racism rally since the deadly clashes in Charlottesville, Virginia, earlier this month. Chanel Helm, a Black Lives Matter organizer in Louisville, Kentucky, wrote an article making 10 suggestions for white people. Now, the first says, white people, if you don't have any descendants, will your property to a black or brown family? Now, she recommends that white people who can afford to downsize should give up their homes to black people. The list also urges readers to record people who make racist comments in the workplace and get them fired. Now we can now hear from Chanel Helm, the Black Lives Matter activist who wrote these uh, 10 demands and also Jeffrey Mark Klein, comedian and writer. Both of them are joining us live here in RT International. Now welcome, it's good to see you both. All right, we're going to start with you, Chanel. Could you explain the thinking behind this article and are your views shared by the Black Lives Matter movement as a whole? Thank you. Um, actually, it's not an article. I want to be all the way clear, nor is it a manifesto. It actually was just a Facebook post. Um, I do organizing within the Black Lives Matter uh, network and for Movement for Black Lives, and we had some people who were on the ground, and it was frustrating uh, seeing what was happening and taking place in Charlottesville. And so this Facebook post was written in response to that. And I was just thinking about the reasons why we do this work, um, the reasons why we have to show up, the reasons why we demand restitution for economic inequality. Um, and, and to say that uh, it, it was like things that people need to do, some people are doing those things, but we also need to know that uh, those things have always been uh, restricted from black and brown people in generational property, property, which is what the post actually says in there. Um, and this isn't any type of new work. Um, and I think that's what also makes it a little daunting is knowing that, um, you know, as people quote MLK, MLK actually his I Have a Dream speech was about workers' rights, black workers' rights, and redeeming restitution for the work that we have been, uh, have committed um, and, and making sure that we receive uh, our due share. All right, so we need to clear here that it is not a manifesto. It was not an article. It is a Facebook page. Now, Jeffrey, I'm turning to you. What is your response to that? Post. Uh, well, I guess the first thing is I read it in an article. So it's being presented as an article, which as a result, um, a lot of people are taking it to be a very serious statement by the Black Lives Matter movement. Is it not? Is it not that? Is it not supported by the Black Lives Matter movement? Chanel? It's, like I said, it's not an article. It was a Facebook post, and it was posted in a local paper. And the person who wrote the article had not, did not get my permission to write what he wrote. Yeah, but do you think that other people uh, oh, who are uh, a part gotcha. of the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, do you think that they support this, this post, the, what was written in the post? Um, yeah. I think what we're seeing in the post is, is a very short way of saying um, the generalization around uh, economic inequality for black and brown people in this country. Uh, it's not, like I said, it is not anything new, the redlining that took place uh, mid-century um, and, and then the way that we make sure that resources are restricted from black people when they uprise. Um, and I think that's, that's what's most interesting. And, the, and where I went with the rest of the post was there's some things that white people actually do need to do. They do need to let us know when people are being racist and when they're saying racist things. Um, if you're in the workplace and someone says some racist things and you don't say anything and then, you know, people of color, black people, brown people uh, get employment there and then they have to go through those things, that's traumatizing. That's not something that anybody wants to go through. And that's the reason why I wrote that uh, situation on the post as well. All right, I see. Now, Jeffrey, do you have any one of the questions I that? have? Okay. Oh, sorry. Continue. Yeah, please do. You have a question, please. Yeah, one of the questions. One of the great. Yeah, one of the later numbers of the ten suggestions was to essentially seek out Nazis in the workplace and get them fired. And uh, the word Nazi has been so watered down lately that I don't think anybody really knows what it means anymore. And so I was just curious what Chanel's definition of Nazi is, just so it's cleared up for anybody who's 
sort of hunting for Nazis to get them fired from their jobs? Um, not so much Chanel's definition, but clearly the definition of people who seek to end white supremacy. Uh, that's, that's the underlying notion of what a Nazi is. Someone who believes in a fascist governmental system underneath uh, capitalist policies that want to destroy people that don't look like uh, white racist men, essentially. Black and brown people have always had the brunt end of that for decades and centuries. And this is what we're looking at. Jeffrey so goes Nazis sorry, were capitalists? Is that what you're saying? Oh, sorry, I was saying you think that Nazis were capitalists? That's not what I said. Well, you said That's that when I, I asked what the definition of Nazis were, you talked about fascist people in a capitalist society, a fascist capitalist government, mm -hmm. I believe was your definition of Nazism. I'm just mm -hmm. looking for a clarification on your definition of the word Nazi. Okay. I gave it to you. All right, guys. Well, let's move on now. Oh, Chanel, so it I've was gotta... a fascist capitalism. Okay. <laughs> Got uh, it. Well, let's move on here. Now, Chanel, I've got another question for you. Now, some people, if we go back to the suggestions that you posted on Facebook, now some people might view this as a little hostile towards white people. Now, do you think that there is actually a danger that this kind of a message that you shared can make the situation even worse? Because it is quite alarming at the moment. Uh, I don't think it's dangerous at all. Those were just notions um, through a bit of anger that I had, you know, trying to find out if my comrades were okay who had went to Charlottesville to defend um, their right to live in Charlottesville and the help that went there to help them defend that right to live in Charlottesville um, by erasing what history has taught us that the Confederacy has brought us this white supremacist um, notion that, that we can be erased that we don't deserve the resources that we worked for, that we don't deserve the resources that we currently have. Um, I, and when we look at these things, like I mentioned before about uh, MLK, he was, at, at the end of his time, he was talking about a poor people's campaign. And this is what we're really looking at. That's what those, uh, those I made them 10, on that Facebook post was actually talking about. We're, talk, we're looking at people who live in food apartheid, um, economic restraints, um, and even hypercriminalization. We're talking about like the reason, you know, Ferguson even exists. But I, I think that it's dangerous in a sense to say that what I wrote was, was, was racist or uh, dangerous because it wasn't in the least. And none of what I wrote was dangerous in the least. I think what's dangerous is the backlash that I am personally receiving from that. That's so threats and all. So you don't believe that what you wrote, the suggestions are racist? No, it wasn't racist in one bit. Okay. Now, Jeffrey, I clearly... I can't be racist. I, I don't benefit from racism. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, Jeffrey, clearly the U.S. has uh, quite a long history of yeah. racial conflict. But do you think that Chanel has a point here um, when she says that, well, that white people actually owe a debt to black people? Uh, I, I mean, I think we're, the main issue we're talking about here is there's black people who've never been slaves asking for money from white people who've never owned slaves. And so it's difficult for me to be able to wrap my brain around owing somebody something when I clearly don't owe them anything. And the notion that the, that the list of 10 things wasn't racist when, it's, when all it's doing is talking about race <laughs> And essentially, it's basically the articles. The, sorry, it's not an article. The list is essentially implying that black and brown people are incapable of achieving economic growth, and as a result, white people need to give them economic advantages. I think it's very racist against black and brown people to essentially tell them they're not capable of this, and then to imply that there's nothing dangerous in that list of 10 things at all. Um, in one of the points, you even say uh, something to the effect of, you have hands, colon, use them. <laughs> Very much uh, hearkening back to this overused phrase right now about punching Nazis, which again, no one can give me a clear definition of what a Nazi is and why all of a sudden so many people who simply are politically in the center or right of center just get called Nazis. So I Look, think that, Jake, uh, Jake. that this list of 10 things what, what is we're essentially talking about a lot of danger uh, between black and white people. Like it's perpetuating a lot of this 
racial tension. It's furthering the divide between races, which I think, if anything, we should be trying to come together. And uh, it is encouraging some level of violence. And it's very naive to act like you don't think it does. Actually, this, actually, this current administration is, is furthering the, the, the divide. I think what we're seeing right now is the media taking advantage <laughs> of what's happening in the White House underneath the Trump administration, especially given positions like Steve Bannon, who's now gone, and we keep playing apprentice, but also Jeff Sessions is over our law enforcement. And when we talk about Nazis and punching Nazis, we are talking about white supremacy. White supremacy did deal some of the most deadliest types of genocide that our world has ever seen. So I, we're not talking about something that's just in a tin list of things. And when I'm talking about using your hands, because Nazis are violent. They hit people. They caused an entire riot scene down in Charlottesville. A man drove his car into a crowd of people killing Helen he Heather Heiler. And Jake, you sit up here and you talk like you don't understand what a Nazi is. Let's remember where the word Nazi even comes from. It comes from Germanic people who were uh, in, who proclaimed to like have this superior race. That's what white supremacy is. That's what white supremacy is in the U.S. We are talking about a systemic economic barrier that prevents black and brown people, black and brown people who are, were already on this land from even obtaining land in various different ways, redlining, keeping jobs away. We're talking about food apartheid. That is real. Keeping grocery stores away. Our city closed four grocery stores in like a two mile area. That is a problem. And so those are the things that we're talking about. But we're also talking about when black people and brown people decide to stand up and then we want to call them rise. Those are uprisings. And those uprisings are always heard from the people who are always the most marginalized, just like Ferguson, Charlottesville, Charlotte, Chicago, et cetera. But we're talking about here, we're really talking about ways that white people who are beneficial to the white supremacy. Everybody wants to talk about slavery and slave this and slave that. You forget we're talking about chattel slavery where people own people just like property. Okay, unfortunately, like I do have to chattel, interrupt you like here. Like we do cattle. Uh, I do have to, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I do have to <laughs> interrupt you here because we're running out of time. It That's was a pleasure fine. talking to you. Uh, Chanel Helm, Jeffrey Mark Klein, thank you for being with us here on RT International.